We have covered some of these criminals in previous videos and some will be new. A whole life sentence or a whole life order has been given to a select number of inmates. It is the harshest sentence in the UK. These inmates will never leave prison. We will be briefly discussing the 70 plus inmates in prison today serving their whole life sentences. 1. Levi Belfield Levi Belfield took the lives of three women and attempted to take the life of one other. These crimes took place in London between 2002 and 2004. He was found guilty on the 25th of Feb 2008. On the 23rd of June 2011, Belfield was found guilty of taking the life of Millie Dowler. He was given a second whole life sentence. He is the first prisoner to be handed to. The police are still investigating other cases they believe Levi Belfield is connected to, dating back to the 1980s up to his arrest. He is currently engaged to a female visitor, who he met through Peter Sutcliffe. Current laws state he is entitled to be married. Reportedly, he will be getting married in the next few months. In prison, he works as a bin man. The 55-year-old remains in Franklin Prison. 2. Arthur Simpson Kent Arthur Simpson Kent took the life of former EastEnders actress Sean Blake, aged 43, and their two sons in their home in London in December 2015. The motive being that Sean had planned to leave him and take their kids. He fled to his native Ghana but was extradited. In 2016, he was given a whole life sentence. He pled guilty. He has since appealed his whole life sentence, saying that a min term of 30 years would be a just sentence, but this was rejected. The 57 year old remains in prison. 3. Jamie Reynolds In May 2013, in Shropshire, 23 year old Jamie Reynolds lured college friend 17 year old Georgia Williams by asking if he could take a photo shoot of her. He entered her parents' home and then took her life, taking photos before and during the whole ordeal. He left her in Wrexham. Following the investigation, it was made clear he had grown an obsession with Georgia Williams and was a deviant. He had previously been cautioned by the police for an incident with another woman. He was handed a whole life sentence. The 33-year-old remains in Wakefield Prison. 4. Gary Smith and Lee Newell Lee Newell had been in prison since the late 1980s after tricking his way into his 56-year-old neighbour's home and taking her life. Gary Smith was jailed in 1999 for taking the life of 22-year-old Ali Hassan who he believed was a police informant. They were both serving their sentence at Long Larton Prison and became friends. In 2013, they followed fellow inmate Saban Anwar, who was serving time for taking the life of his partner's child. Once they entered 24-year-old Anwar's cell, they took his life. They blamed each other and they never explained why, but at their trial, the judge mentioned the prison's moral codes and that being a reason for the targeting. They were both handed whole life sentences and both remain in prison today. 5. George Johnson In April 1986, George Johnson took the life of hotel worker Gerald Homer and took eight pound off of him. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a min term of 17 years. In 2006, he was released on licence and in 2011, he entered the home of an elderly neighbour. He knew her as he had done some odd jobs around her home before. He took her life and then stole 25 quid. He stole to fund his habits. He later confessed to his brother, who then rang the police. On the 3rd of May, he admitted to the crime and was given a whole life sentence. The 60-year-old remains in prison. 6. Douglas Vinter in 1996, Douglas Vinter took the life of 22-year-old Carl Eden. He served nine years for this. In 2008, he took the life of his wife, Anne White, and admitted this in court. 
he was handed a whole life sentence. He appealed in 2009, but this was rejected. In 2011, he attacked Roy Whiting, but no charges were pressed. And in 2012, he attacked another prisoner, Lee Newell, who we have previously just mentioned. The 53-year-old remains in prison. 7. Arthur Hutchinson Hutchinson had spent five years in prison for attempting to take the life of his half-brother, Dino, and had several prior convictions of SA. On the morning of September 28, 1983, Hutchinson arrived at Selby Police Station after being arrested on suspicion of theft, burglary and R. He asked to go to the toilet and whilst there, he jumped out of a window. After three and a half weeks on the run, Late in the night of the 23rd of October 1983, Hutchinson broke into the home of Basil and Avril Leitner. He took their lives as well as their 28-year-old son. He then awed their 18-year-old daughter, Nicola. His identity was established by the description given by Nicola, by a palm print left on a champagne glass and by a dental impression left by Hutchinson on a block of cheese. After spending another two weeks on the run, wearing disguises and moving from place to place in Barnsley, Manchester and York, he was finally caught on a farm in Hartlepool on the 5th of November 1983. He was given a whole life sentence. In 2008, he appealed his sentence and this was rejected. In 2015, the European Court of Human Rights ruled that a whole life sentence was a breach of human rights. Hutchinson appealed again, and this was rejected. The 82-year-old remains in prison. 8. Anthony Arkwright Anthony Arkwright was known to the police as a petty criminal. He boasted to friends and family how he would be as famous as Jack the Ripper. In 1988, after being fired from his job, he went on a 56-hour spree. He went to his grandfather's allotment and took his life then went to his grandfather's home to steal money. It's believed that this is where he took the life of his grandfather's housekeeper, but this has never been proven. The night of that same day, he went to the pub, drinking. The next day, he had an argument with wheelchair-bound neighbour, Marcus Law. He took his life. On the Monday, Marcus Law's mum came to see him and alerted the police. Arkwright was the main suspect. He denied the charges. Raymond Ford, Arkwright's neighbour, had rang the police a few days before, reporting Arkwright of robbing his home. The police went across to his house to speak to him and found that Arkwright had taken his life too. By 1990, Anthony Arkwright was given a whole life sentence. He showed no emotions. He appealed his whole life sentence in 2014, but this was rejected. The 57-year-old remains in prison. 9. Lucy Letby Lucy Letby was a former neonatal nurse. She was convicted of taking the lives of seven infants and attempting to take the lives of six others between June 2015 and June 2016. Whenever suspicious incidents happened at the hospital, it was found that Lucy Letby was on duty. This was investigated and in November 2020, she was charged. On the 21st of August 2023, Letby was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life sentence. She has asked for permission to appeal against her convictions. A retrial for one count is also planned. The 34-year-old remains in Low Newton Prison. 10. Desmond Lee in 1989, at the age of 19, Desmond Lee took the life of his landlady, Shirley Carr. He was convicted and served 14 years. He was released in 2004, and in 2009, he took the life of his lover, who was having an affair with, Christopher Pratt. He went on to use credit and debit cards and go on shopping sprees. On the 13th of April, 2010, he admitted to the charges. And on the 24th of April, he was found guilty and handed a whole life sentence. The 53-year-old remains in prison. 11. John Maiden 
On the 3rd of April 2010, John Maiden phoned his sister to ask for his 12-year-old niece, Tia Rigg, to come to his house to babysit. When his niece arrived, he took her life. On the same day, he phoned the police admitting to the crime, saying he did it because he felt like it. On the 4th of October 2010, he was given a whole life sentence. The 51-year-old remains in prison. 12. Mark Martin Mark Martin had committed plenty of crimes through his teenage years and by 2002 his marriage was in a shambles. In 2004 he was arrested on suspicion of hurting his wife. The next day he phoned the police telling them he believed he would go further if no action was taken. The police took no action. By 2004 he was living in a tent. The Nottingham's homeless community was scared of him. Along with two of his friends, he took the lives of three women between 2004 and 2005. On the 16th of January 2006, all three went to trial. Mark Martin, the ringleader, was given a whole life sentence. Dean Carr and John Ashley were given a life sentence with a min term of 25 years. The 45-year-old remains in prison. 13. Thomas McDowell Thomas McDowell was born in Northern Ireland and by 2002 was living in London. On the 3rd of July 2002, German national Andreas Heinz, a 37-year-old trainee rabbi, was drinking alone in the Black Cab pub in Camden, London. This is where he met McDowell. They went back to Thomas McDowell's flat and this is where his life was taken. McDowell went on trial in September 2004. He was handed a whole life sentence, deeming he was not safe to re-enter the community at any point. The 47-year-old remains in Rapton Secure Hospital serving his sentence. 14. Stephen McCall Stephen McCall was a gangster as well as a police informant. In 1997, the police believed he took the life of Ralph Sprott, but was never charged. On the 23rd of March 2001, Michael Duran disappeared after spending a weekend in Scotland with Stephen McCall, who he had previously fallen out with. On the 1st of November 2003, Philip Noakes disappeared after being seen talking to Stephen McCall. He had also fallen out with him. The police established that Stephen McCall was the last person to see both of the victims and he took both of their lives. Ralph Sprott has never been found. The police believe this is due to Stephen McCall's experience working in funeral homes. McCall was charged but was already in prison serving time for robberies. At his trial he denied the charges but was found guilty and handed a whole life sentence. He remains in prison. 15. John McGrady In 1993, John McGrady had been in prison for five years for false imprisonment of a woman he abducted as she got off the bus. By 1998, he was jailed for six years for R and SA on two women. He was out of prison by 2005. In that same year, on the 25th of September 2005 in London, Rochelle Holness vanished after going to call her boyfriend from a phone box. She was found shortly after. On the 28th of September, John McGrady admitted to his girlfriend what he had done. The police believe that he could be connected to many more cases from 1997 up to his arrest. In 2006, he was given a whole life sentence. The 47-year-old remains in prison. 16. Ian McLaughlin Ian McLaughlin had a long criminal history for theft and other offences. In 1983, he took the life of lover Len Delgatty. He served five years for this. In 1989, he was released on licence. He moved to Brighton and worked in a bar. He started a relationship with another barman, Peter Halls, and took his life. On the 2nd of July 1992, he was given a life sentence with a min term of 25 years. 
In 2012, he was let out on day release and decided to rob the home of ex-prisoner, 86-year-old Francis Wright, who he had met while in prison. Graham Buck, Francis White's neighbour, heard arguing and entered the home. His life was taken. After doing so, he went to a friend's house to drink. He was handed a whole life order. The 66-year-old remains in prison. 17. William McFall William McFall was born in Northern Ireland and took the life of widow Martha Gilmore. He was given a life sentence. He was sent to serve his time in England in Hull Prison. This is where he met Stephen Unwin, who was in Hull Prison for the same charge. In 2010, McFall was released on licence. Stephen Unwin, his former cell buddy, was also free. They moved into a house together. In August 2017, they lured a woman to the house for potential maintenance work, but they demanded her money and her bank cards. They essayed her and then took her life. She was discovered in her own car when it was set on fire. They both went to trial and were given whole life sentences. They both remain in separate prisons. 18. Victor Miller in 1980, Victor Miller served a seven-year sentence for the abduction of a 13-year-old boy. By 1988, 18-year-old Richard Holden was attacked by a man while riding his bike in Wellington. Another incident occurred on the same day in a park with a woman. Only a day later, a paper boy, Stuart Goff, turned up to do the first half of his paper round, but never returned to the newsagents for his second round. A huge manhunt began. Victor Miller was arrested and questioned where he confessed. He was arrested because of his criminal record as well as a description given for the two other crimes reported to the police the day before. He went on trial and was handed a whole life sentence for taking the life of Stuart Goff. He has never appealed his sentence and said in court that he believed it was just. He remains in prison. 19. Peter Moore Peter Moore managed cinemas in Holyhead in Wales at the time of his arrest. He took the lives of four men in 1995. Due to his trademark attire of a black shirt and tie, he was dubbed the Man in Black. At his trial, Moore told the jury the crimes were committed by his lover he nicknamed Jason, after the Friday the 13th movies, which happened to be his favourite. The jury found him guilty on all counts. He was handed a whole life sentence and befriended Harold Shipman while in Wakefield. He appealed once, but this was rejected. The 78-year-old remains in prison. 20. Paul O'Hara In 1998, O'Hara took the life of ex-girlfriend, 21-year-old Janine Waterworth, he served 13 and a half years for this and was released on licence in 2012. In March 2014, Sherrilee Shanann rang O'Hara's probation officers, telling them that he had attacked her. Later that day, police officers arrived at her house. While at the door, he parged past them and attacked them as well as Sherrilee. He took her life and injured the officers. He went on trial the same year and was charged and handed a whole life sentence. The 54-year-old remains in prison. 21. Stephen Port Stephen Port was convicted of taking the lives of four young men and multiple R's and S.A.'s of a number of others. Port received a whole life sentence on the 25th of November 2016. The police are investigating various other crimes of the same nature. They think he could be linked to. The 48-year-old remains in prison. 22. Mark Robinson On the 27th of May 1979, he took the life of neighbour, 32-year-old Patricia Wagner in Billingham. The teenager was charged and served 10 years in prison. He was released in 1989 and met Sharon Morley. The relationship was very toxic. In the September of the same year he was released, he found a photograph of Sharon's old boyfriend. This made him angry and he took the life of Sharon. He was handed a whole life sentence. 
While in prison in 2011, he got annoyed that his bread ration had been changed. He attacked various prison officers and it took 10 to restrain him. Five needed hospital treatment. This added five years to his whole life sentence. The 62 year old remains in prison. 23. Kenneth Regan and William Hornsey. Both were found guilty in 2005 of taking the life of millionaire Amrajit Chuhan as well as his wife, mother-in-law and two sons. His sons were never found. They were both handed whole life sentences. They both remain in prison. 24. Anthony Russell On the 1st of October 2020, Anthony Russell took the life of David Williams. He then went to the home of David's mother and admitted what he had done. Realising she would tell the police, he then took her life too. On the 26th of October, he fled from Coventry. He attacked a man and a woman for cash. He then took the life of Nicole McGregor. He went on to steal a car but was later arrested. David Williams and his mother were found and all cases were linked. He went to court in 2022 and was handed a whole life sentence. The 41 year old remains in prison. 25 Michael Smith In 1975, 25 year old Michael Smith took the life of his girlfriend, Sheila Deacon. After serving 29 years, he was released in 2005 on licence. While living in a hostel, he met Peter Summers. He knew Peter Summers had a stash of money in his loft, so he took the life of Peter and then took his girlfriend on a shopping spree. After the shopping spree, he told his girlfriend and then handed himself into the police. In May 2007, he went on trial and was given a whole life sentence. The 75 year old remains in prison. 26. John Sweeney John Sweeney was given a whole life sentence for taking the life of Melissa Halstead, a former model from Ohio. He took her life in Holland, but was not convicted till 2011. He attacked a woman in between them and went on the run. While on the run, he took the life of Paula Fields, who was 31 years old. She was living in North London at the time. John Sweeney was already serving a life sentence for an attack on a third girlfriend. He refused to come up to hear his sentence and remained in his prison cell at Belmarsh. There are currently two other cases that are open involving disappearances of women, but there's not enough evidence to charge him. The 68 year old remains in Belmarsh prison. 27. David Tilly in 1995, David Tilly served six years for R. He was released in 2006 and met Susan Hale, who was disabled. They met at an amusement park in Southampton. That same year, he moved in with her, but was sent back to prison for 10 months for not letting the police know his change of address. In 2007, he was released. Him and Susan got engaged. On the 5th of March, it was the last time Susan was seen. They had argued and Tilly took her life. Susan's carer, Sarah Merritt, arrived at her home and found what had happened. David Tilly demanded her bank cards and then took her life also. He then fled to Weymouth. They were found and Tilly was arrested in Swanage. At his trial in June 2007, he admitted to all the charges. He was handed a whole life sentence. The 65 year old remains in prison. 28. Rose West Rose West collaborated with her husband, Fred West, and took the lives of at least nine young women between 1973 and 1987, one including her eight year old stepdaughter, Charmaine. In 1995, she was handed a whole life sentence. Her husband, Fred West, never got sentenced as he took his own life before his trial. She appealed her sentence, but they were rejected. She was moved prisons due to her safety, twice. 
the 70-year-old remains in prison. 29. Stephen Wright Stephen Wright took the lives of five women who worked in Ipswich. The crimes took place during the final months of 2006. Wright was found guilty in February 2008 and given a whole life sentence. Police are still investigating other cold cases they think could link back to him. The 66-year-old remains in prison. 30. Mark Hobson Mark Hobson took the lives of four people in July 2004. He was arrested after an eight-day nationwide manhunt involving more than 500 police officers and 12 police forces, during which time he was Britain's most wanted man. Police discovered notes written by Hobson and plans showing that the crime was premeditated. In April 2005 he went on trial and he pled guilty to all charges. He was sentenced to four terms of life imprisonment with a recommendation that he should never be released. He was handed a whole life sentence. He appealed but these were rejected. The 55 year old remains in Wakefield prison. 31. Philip Hegarty In April 2003, Hegarty and his best friend Derek Bennett went out together drinking in local pubs in Swansea. They went to a party and then headed back to Hegarty's flat. Once there, Philip Hegarty took the life of his best friend. He then stole money from him. Bennett was found in his burning car. DNA evidence confirmed what the police believed and Philip Hegarty was arrested. He went on trial in 2004 and was handed a whole life sentence. He appealed in 2014, but this was dismissed. The 42-year-old remains in prison. 32. Christopher Halliwell In March 2007, Becky Gooden took Halliwell on as a client. He began to become jealous, so he took her life. She was not discovered until eight years later. In March 2011, Sean O'Callaghan was 22 years old and got into Halliwell's taxi after clubbing in Swindon. By March 24th, Halliwell was arrested. In December 2012, he was charged with life imprisonment for taking the life of Sean O'Callaghan. Halliwell then led the police to Becky Gooden. He laughed. In 2016, he was handed a whole life sentence. The police are still investigating other cold cases they believe that could be linked to him. The 61-year-old remains in prison. 33. Malcolm Green In Cardiff, in June 1971, Malcolm Green bumped into Glenis Johnson. After leaving a nightclub, he then took her life. He rang the police saying, have you found her yet? There will be four more. The calls were traced back to where Green worked, and he was arrested. In 1971, he was given life imprisonment with a min term of 25 years. After serving 18 years, he was released in 1989 and moved to Bristol where he met New Zealand tourist Clive Tully. In 1990, Malcolm Green took the life of Clive Tully and then left him across South Wales. They went to Tully's flat and found the scene of the crime as well as Green's fingerprints. Green was then arrested. In 1991 he was handed a whole life sentence where he shouted, you are wrong. The 79 year old remains in prison. 34. Paul Glenn in Feb 1989 at 17 years old, Paul Glenn and a friend robbed a local guest house. They took the life of the owner and stole money. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and served 13 years. He was released in 2002. In 2004, builder Robert Lotz hired Paul Glenn to scare Vincent Smart, who he thought was intimidating his son. Glenn travelled from Liverpool to Cambridge. He kicked down the door and entered the home where he took the life of Robert Bogle, who he thought was Vincent Smart. Robert crawled into the street for help where a group of teenage girls saw Glenn calmly walk down the road from the house. 
Vincent Smart lived with Robert. Glenn was arrested on the 2nd of August 2004 and in 2005 was handed a whole life sentence. While serving his time in Whitemore Prison, in 2007, Paul Glenn got married. He appealed his conviction, but this was rejected. The 46-year-old remains in Whitemore Prison. 35. Stephen Griffiths Between June 2009 and May 2010, Stephen Griffiths took the life of three women in Bradford. He was arrested on the 24th of May and was charged... After being found guilty, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life sentence without any possibility of parole. The 54-year-old remains in prison. 36. David Fuller In 2021, David Fuller was convicted of taking the lives of Wendy Neal, aged 25, and Caroline Pierce, aged 20. He broke into their homes months apart in 1987 in the area of Kent. David Fuller was charged thanks to new forensic techniques and a cold case review. As well as his whole life sentence, he was also charged with an additional 16 offences, committed at mortuaries in the now closed Kent and Sussex Hospital where he worked. He pled guilty to the charges on the 3rd of November 2022. The 70 year old is imprisoned at Franklin Prison and remains there today. 37 Mark Fellows Mark Fellows took the life of John Kinsella and Paul Massey in gang rivalry in 2015. His Garmin watch placed him at the crime scene. He was handed a whole life sentence. In February 2019, Fellows was seriously injured and airlifted to hospital. He was attacked again at Whitemore Prison. He appealed his sentence in 2021 but this was rejected. The 43-year-old remains in prison. 38. Anthony Entwistle Anthony Entwistle was jailed for life in March 1988 for taking the life of Michelle Carvey, a school pupil. He committed his crime after being released from a 10-year sentence in prison for R. He was handed a whole life sentence. He has appealed five separate times, the latest being in 2013. The 75-year-old remains in prison. 39. John Duffy and David McCaughey John Duffy and David McCaughey were childhood best friends. They went on to attack numerous women and children and take the lives of free women around railway stations in southern England during the 1980s. In 1988, David McCaughey was given three life sentences. He has won art awards for the stuff he creates while behind bars in full sight in prison. Duffy was given a whole life sentence and the 66 year old remains in prison. 40. Wilbert Deich On the 17th of July 1982, Wilbert Deich pretended to know Keith Cunningham, the brother of England footballer Laurie Cunningham, who was the father of one of Norma Richards' children. He walked her home from the pub he then took her life and the life of her two children. He put graffiti over the house to try make the police think it was a racist attack. In 2010, the cold case was reinvestigated and the now improved DNA forensics linked Wilbert Deich to the crime. He went to court in November 2010. He was given a whole life sentence. The judge stated for 28 years he showed no remorse. The 69-year-old remains in prison. 41. Joanna Dennehy In 2013, Joanna Dennehy took the lives of three men. She was handed a whole life sentence. She first served her time in Bronzefield Prison, but an escape plot was found in her diary where she would harm or take the life of prison officers, so she was placed in solitary confinement. In 2018, while still in Bronzefield, she requested to marry her cellmate. They both attempted to take their own lives in a pack that failed. She was then moved to Low Newton Prison in Durham. Upon her arrival, she allegedly threatened Rosemary West, who was moved to another prison. She remains in Low Newton Prison, where she is currently in solitary confinement. 42. Victor's Dembrovsky 
In May 2005, he took the life of 17-year-old Jeshma in West London on her way home from school. He fled to his native Latvia for four days but was arrested and returned to England. DNA evidence was found at the scene and he had stolen her necklace, which was found in his pocket. In 2006, he was charged and given a whole life sentence. It was revealed at the trial he had previous charges of R in Latvia. The 62-year-old remains in prison. 43. Andrew Dawson In 1982, Andrew Dawson was given a life sentence for taking the life of 91-year-old Henry Walsh. In 2010, he was released and within weeks took the life of neighbours John Matthews and Paul Hancock. He was arrested and told the police he just felt the urge. In 2011, he was handed a whole life sentence. He is 66 and remains in prison. 44 Wayne Cousins On the evening of the 3rd of March 2021, 33-year-old Sarah Everard was kidnapped by off-duty Met Police Officer Wayne Cousins. He identified himself as a police officer, handcuffed her and placed her in his car. He then drove her near Dover, where he took her life. He admitted responsibility, and on the 9th of July, he pled guilty. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life sentence on the 30th of September 2021. The 52-year-old remains in prison. 45. Dale Cregan On the 18th of September 2012, Two Manchester police officers, Nicola Hughes and Fiona Bone, had their lives taken by Dale Cregan in an ambush while responding to a report of a burglary in Manchester. On the 12th of Feb 2013, Cregan changed his plea to guilty in relation to taking the lives of the police officers. Three months later, he admitted to taking two other people's lives in a crime related to gangland feuds in Manchester. In 2013, he was handed a whole life sentence. In August 2013, it was reported that Cregan was on a hunger strike at Full Sutton Prison. He was moved to Ashworth Hospital near Liverpool in the September. He was transferred back to Manchester in March 2018 from Ashworth, where it was reported he boasted about his workout regime and access to snooker and tennis. The 40-year-old remains in Manchester prison. 46. John Cooper John Cooper was sentenced to 14 years in 1998 for robbery and burglary. He was released from prison in January 2009. In April 2009, the police carried out a cold case review because of developments in DNA and they identified John Cooper as taking the lives of siblings Richard and Helen Thomas in 1985 and taking the lives of Peter and Gwenda Dixon. He was rearrested and in May 2011 was handed a whole life sentence. The 79 year old remains in prison. 47 John Childs John Childs, also known as Bruce Childs, was contracted to take the lives of three people in the 70s. He implicated Terry Pinfold and Harry McKenney, but they were released in 2003. He was given a whole life sentence. While serving at Long Larton Prison, he admitted that he has committed five more. He remains in prison. 48. Mark Shivers in 1992, while living in Germany, Mark Shivers took the life of Sabine Rappold. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. He served 15 years and was released in 2007. In 2008, now back in the UK, he served four months for a domestic on his girlfriend, Maria Stubbings. She complained to the police that he had broken into her house. On the 18th of December, the police went to Maria's house. Mark Shivers said that she was out. They arrived back later that same day, where they realised her life had been taken. He was arrested, and at his trial in 2009, he admitted to the charges. He was given a whole life sentence. The 58-year-old remains behind bars. 49. Leroy Campbell 
In 1991, Leroy Campbell was charged with R. He had a previous offence in 1983. In 2003, he was jailed for another offence on a woman. He was made to attend lots of rehabilitation courses. In 2005, while he served in Wakefield Prison, he went to parole. It was determined he was not suitable for release. This happened again in 2007. In 2016, the parole board deemed he was safe to enter back into the community. He was released. In that same year, he climbed into the home of nurse Lisa Skidmore in Wolverhampton, where he took her life. He attempted to take the life of Lisa's mother and set the house on fire. In 2017, he was on trial and he was handed a whole life sentence. The 62-year-old remains in prison with no chance of parole this time or ever again. 50. Damien Bendel On the evening of September 18th, 2021, Damien Bendel took the life of his partner, Terry Harris, her two children and her child's friend at their house in Sheffield. The next morning he was arrested, where he told the police what he had done. He pled guilty to all charges and was sentenced to a whole life prison term on the 21st of December 2022. The 36-year-old remains in prison. 51. Ian Burley In 1995, Ian Burley took the life of 69-year-old Maurice Hoyle and went and robbed the home. In 1996, he was sentenced to life in prison. He was released in 2013 on licence. He continuously broke his licence agreements. In 2015, he took the life of John Gorrity. He did this with his partner, Helen Nichols. They then stole money so they could settle a debt. On the 5th of December 2015, both Ian Burley and Helen Nichols were found guilty. Helen Nichols was given a min term of 20 years and Ian Burley was handed a whole life sentence. The 53-year-old remains behind bars. 52. Mark Bredger On the 1st of October 2012, five-year-old April Jones disappeared after she was last seen playing outside of her home in Wales. Mark Bredger helped with the search, but subsequently was arrested. On the 30th of May 2013, Bridger was found guilty and was handed a whole life sentence. The 59-year-old remains in prison. 53. David Baxendale In 2001, David Baxendale was sentenced to 11 years for taking the life of his friend in Spain while he was under the influence. He was deported back to the UK in 2008. He was released that same year. In 2010, he met Sarah Thomas at a mutual friend's flat. They went back to her place where he took her life. The police found forensic evidence in her flat, but he fled to Portsmouth using his brother's passport and ended up in France. A member of the public recognised him while in Spain and he was arrested and deported. In 2011, he was handed a whole life sentence. He appealed in 2012, but this was rejected. The 54-year-old remains in prison. 54. Jeremy Bamba Jeremy Bamba was convicted of taking the lives of his adoptive parents, his adoptive sister and his sister's two twin sons. A majority guilty verdict returned and the jury found that the motive was so he could secure a large inheritance. At the trial it was stated they believed that Bamba set the crime scene up to make it look like his sister had done it as she suffered from mental health issues. He was handed a whole life sentence. He has repeatedly applied unsuccessfully to have his conviction overturned or his whole life sentence removed. His extended family remains convinced of his guilt. There is evidence to suggest his innocence, but all appeals have been rejected. On the 10th of March 2021, a new application was lodged for a referral to the Court of Appeal. As of 2023, he has spent 37 years behind bars, making him one of the longest serving prisoners in the UK. He remains in prison. 55. Ali Harvey Ali 
on the 15th of October 2021, Ali Harvey Ali took the life of politician Sir David Amos in Essex. He was known to the police and was an Islamic State sympathiser. He was arrested at the scene. In April 2022, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order. The 29-year-old remains in prison. 56. Rahan Ashad Rahan Ashad took the life of his wife and their three children in Greater Manchester in August 2006. On the 13th of March 2007, he was jailed for life and was given a whole life sentence. He fled to Thailand originally, but returned and was arrested. At his trial, it was told his motivation was because he had found out his wife was having an affair. The 55-year-old remains in prison. 57. Michael Adebolajo On the afternoon of the 22nd of May 2013, Islamic terrorist Michael Adebolajo and Michael Adebowali took the life of British soldier Lee Rigby. They were both found guilty and handed life sentences. Michael Adebowali has been in and out from hospital to prison. In July 2014, Michael Adebolajo lost his two front teeth while being restrained by five officers at Belmarsh Prison. The 31-year-old remains in Belmarsh Prison today. 58. Kahiri Sadiala He was 27 years old when he took the lives of three men in 10 seconds during a jihadist attack in a Redden Park in 2020. He had previously been part of an Islamic extremist militia in Libya. He was refused an appeal against his whole life term in 2021. The 30 year old remains in prison. 59. Hakim Kigandu Hakim Kigandu took the lives of two people by setting fire to a block of flats in Redden in 2021. He made voice notes of his intentions, bought 50 litres of petrol and poured it on the ground floor of his former home before igniting the fire. At his trial it was told this was an act of revenge for being evicted. He pled guilty to two counts. He was found guilty and was handed a whole life sentence in 2022. The 34 year old remains in prison. 60. Louis de Soisa met police sergeant Matty Ratana, who was aged 54, had his life taken by Louis de Soisa, who smuggled a weapon into the building of the Croydon Custody Centre in 2020. He then used the weapon on himself and his brain damaged. He was found guilty in 2022 and handed a whole life sentence. He remains in prison. 61. Robert Morsley Robert Morsley has been in prison since he was 21 after he was found guilty of taking the life of John Farrell, who was convicted of offences against children. Following his imprisonment, he has taken the lives of three other inmates. He has spent more than 16,500 consecutive days in isolation. Many people believe that he was failed by the system multiple times throughout his whole life. The 70-year-old remains in Wakefield Prison. 62. Andrew Randall Andrew Randall took the life of his seven-week-old daughter, Jessica, at their home in Kettering. He was sentenced to a full life sentence in 2007. He remains in prison. 63. Anwar Rossa Former soldier Anwar Rossa was given a whole life sentence for taking the life of four-year-old Riley Turner in 2013. Riley's family had let Rossa stay the night in their home out of compassion after he turned up drunk following a night out. At around 4am he crept up the stairs and took Riley's life. He remains in prison. 64. Ian Maidman Ian Maidman was sentenced to a whole life sentence for taking the life of a man in 2017, nine months after being released from prison. He set the car on fire to conceal his crime. Nearly two decades earlier, Maidman had taken the life of a 72-year-old man in a flat in Manchester. 65. Ryan Matthews Ryan Matthews took the life of a healthcare assistant 
at a psychiatric hospital in 2014. The following year, in 2015, he was given a whole life sentence. He remains in prison today. 66. David Mitchell David Mitchell took the life of Robert Hind while out on licence from an earlier sentence for taking the life of his girlfriend. He was sentenced to a whole life order in 2015. He remains in prison. 67. Jason Gomez Jason Gomez and Paul Wadkin lured Darren Flynn into their cell at Swellside Prison on the Isle of Sheppey. They took his life. Gomez was already serving a life sentence. He was given a whole life sentence in 2015. Wadkins was jailed for a min of 30 years. They both remain in prison. 68. Anthony Ayres Anthony Ayres was out on licence. He took the life of his ex-girlfriend in 1993. While out on licence, he took the life of another woman at a friend's flat in Essex. He was handed a whole life sentence in 2016 and remains in prison today. 69. Billy White Billy White took the life of his girlfriend in 2015 and was handed a sentence of life imprisonment with a min term of 30 years. Later, he took the life of a fellow prisoner in Long Larton Prison. His sentence was increased to a whole life sentence in 2017. He remains in prison. 70. John Taylor John Taylor was jailed for a min term of 30 years for taking the life of schoolgirl Leanne Tierman in 2000. After being arrested, he was linked to a string of other offences that happened in Leeds from the 1970s, 80s and 90s, which he admitted. He was then handed a whole life sentence in 2018. He remains in prison. Thanks for watching. Until next time.